Hey guys, I don't know if this video is going to see the light of day, but if it does, some of you are going to think I'm crazy, but it also means if you're seeing this, it worked. So I'm, I'm not crazy. I just had this idea tonight to make my seat a little bit more comfortable. Now, some of you may know I have a lamb seat, and yes, I know it has the lifetime comfort guarantee. I can at any time send it back for any kind of changes to it. Um, but a big drawback to that is uh, at least one-way shipping. I don't know if he covers shipping back when you do that. I know he covers shipping back when you buy a seat, but I don't know about the adjustments. Anyway, that's not the big issue. The big issue is the downtime. The guy is slammed, okay? Really great seats and really popular seats, and I do not want to give up riding time. So, if I can try to fix any kind of issue myself, I'm definitely going to take that first option. Now, Again, those of you that have watched my videos know that the only issue that I have, and it's only after several hours of riding, all day riding, hundreds of miles, I will start to feel a little pressure point right on my tailbone. Just, just a little spot. That's it. It's not a big deal. I just have to, you know, shift my butt around a little bit, and then it's, it's okay. But that's it. Not a big deal. If you also watched my video a few days ago, where Christopher Nix came by and he had on a Russell Day long seat. He was doing the big iron butt ride, so you know he needed ultimate comfort and he was riding a Corbin seat from Alabama all the way down to Miami. It killed him, absolutely killed him. He could not continue with it. Luckily he hooked up with a buddy and got a Russell Day long seat on it and that cured the rest of his seat problems at least. So I got a chance to try that out while, while he was here and immediately, and he also tried my lamb, we noticed the exact same thing, okay, as far as that issue goes. The Russell Day Long has some more padding right there on the tailbone. It has like a big fluffy quilted padding. I mean, you can tell it's a good half inch at least more padding right in that spot. The other difference is the lamb, like most other aftermarket seats, is based on the stock seat pan, this plastic base plate, everything else is built on top of it. So when you send in your stock seats or you buy the other custom seats, what they've done is they take the stock cover off, they take off the stock foam, and then they just build up from there. But everything is based on this shape. The problem is where I'm feeling it is with the stock seat pan, not specifically the way the seat's made or anything like that. Let me show you. Okay, don't worry about this right now. I'll explain that in a bit. But here we've got the stock seat pan. And this is a nice slope. Here, I'll turn it so you can see what I'm talking about. So the area I feel is right here. Right here. This is right where my tailbone is. The passenger seat comes to about here. This is the edge of the stock seat pan, and this is where it's running over the edge. This is curved down just a little bit, and then right here, just in the middle, I mean just a, a couple square inches, that's it. When I sit down, that's after several hours I start to feel. Well, if you look on the other side, what it's contacting is where the stock seat pan flattens out, right here. This line here is where this is sloping up, and then it goes flat for the remainder. And it's right on this edge where the two are meeting. It's curved coming down on the top and up on the bottom. So that point is very thin as far as how much padding is up there. Right in here. So here was my thought. All right, add foam. First thing I tried was a piece of camping pad that I had that probably would have worked very well. It's a double density foam. This is like a soft egg crate. And then this is denser. Yeah, this is what you sleep on. Uh, it's up there, a big roll. That's what I use for camping. Well, the problem with that was access. I couldn't get it inside. You can't see it right now, but if you flip your stock seat over or probably your aftermarket seat, you'll see an access hole, a little rectangle. I mean, real little. I can barely get my pinky in it. And you can see through to the foam, just like this one here and this one here. It's for ventilation and any kind of water drainage and that kind of thing. 
There's only one up here on the side. It's right underneath um, the bracket here. So I, I couldn't shove it in there. I could you know, barely squish it and get it in, but I had no way of sliding it over a couple inches or you know, there was no way it was gonna expand out and get nice and comfy. Now the foam inside, it's not glued down to the seat or anything. So uh, what I did is I took an Allen wrench that was fairly long and it slid in no problem and, and it can, you can depress it and you know, make a cavity to put something in. You know, just like this. So I was just putting an Allen wrench in the, the rectangular slot up here and then just depressing it. But I couldn't then get anything in there because the Allen wrench was in there. So my thought was expanding foam. I've used this obviously around the house, but it's always, you know, rock hard. It's for insulation. It's for filling gaps and, you know, around pipes in the bathroom and uh, between studs and stuff like that. However, I found one that's squishy, just like this. And I'll show that to you now. I'm sure there are other brands that do the same thing. This is great stuff, made by Dow. You can find it at Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, Ace. Everybody carries this brand, all right? It's dirt cheap, under five bucks a can. It's just on a straw. It's an aerosol can. Uh, it's one-time use, so uh, you got about two hours to use it, and then this is completely clogged up. <laughs> I didn't have anything else to use it on, so, well, pretty much a waste of this can. But it comes out, uh, let me spray it for you here, hold on. Here's a bag where I was testing it in because I wanted to see how fast it came out and how much it spread, uh, how much gap it would expand, if any. It doesn't, but I think this is probably clogged up. Let me see if anything comes out. It's probably gonna explode on me here. All right, there you can see it coming out. It's only coming out like that because it's clogged. But you can see it's a, it's a goopy foam. And then after a few minutes, it's, starts to harden up a little. Oh, yeah, they just burst out. <laughs> so it's very soft, it's very squishy. It does not force anything apart. So you need to create a cavity in the seat for it to fill. Now this, this stuff down here, it's been sitting about an hour. And it's set. And I can squish it here. You can see it's slowly coming back. It's just a normal polyurethane foam, just like the stuff in the seat. Now it's not real hard, all right? This is, this is gonna compress fairly easily, but I didn't want something super hard. So I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna see if it works. Now what I did to get this to physically work, like I said, I, I put a big Allen wrench in. Uh, it was long enough to go over this, this whole center section and it was about that tall on the other end. It has to be pretty large because you need to get a big enough gap. So then I pushed it down and you can see it in there. And I, I wedged it a little bit on this slope. And then I used this clamp to hold it there in place. So it's forcing that, that, that cavity open for that foam inside. Now all of this that's out, I'm just gonna rip away after it dries. It's, it's not uh, solid yet, so I don't want to do anything with it. It takes two hours to fully cure, so it's got another hour or so before I can take the clamp off and pull the Allen wrench back out and then see what happens. But I think that's going to do it. What I've done is added about a half an inch vertically of this foam, and I think that's all it's going to take. It's just a, a real slight thing. But here's the cool thing. If you've got a stock seat or another aftermarket, whatever brand, you still got this access hole. You can get in there, you know, do whatever you have to do to create your, your cavity and keep it there while it sets up and go to town. You know, if you've got a, a problem with your stock seat like I did, it's worth it. You know, it's free. If it doesn't work, you can just get in there with, you know, some needle nose pliers and, you know, crack it up and pull it out. Big deal. It doesn't, it's not permanent. Uh, your other option if you want to go even more drastic, maybe you just want to modify your stock seat, you can recover it, all right? There's nothing difficult at all about reupholstering a seat. You only need one thing, and that's the reason I didn't just take these staples off and add something to the top myself. You need a good air staple gun. I don't have an air compressor anymore. 
I don't have an air gun or an air stapler anymore. I've done a ton of jet ski seats, all right? There's, there's no difference between this and a jet ski seat. It is absolutely identical. You just pull your staples out and take your cover off. When you're ready to put the new one on, you start at one end, you keep pulling it tight, you work one side or the other all the way down, and that's it. it. Really, the only important thing is to have a really good staple gun and use really good stainless steel staples. These actually aren't the best. I noticed a couple of them are rusting, and that's just from, so you can see a little rust on that one there. That's just from washing it. Uh, it's never sat out in the rain period. This is just from washing it, so you can see some corrosion going on here in these here. That's pretty much where uh, any kind of water is going to get through in the front. So it's just these front that are a little vulnerable. So not too happy with that. This one here especially, it's starting to flake. It's so corroded. So he could use some better staples, that's for sure. But, you know, like I said, easy enough to do. Don't bother with the handheld ones. They do not have anywhere near the pressure needed to go through this plastic. This is extremely dense plastic. You need an air staple gun, period. So trust me on that. They will go in about a quarter of the way and then just be stuck out there and there's nothing you can do about it. Very, very hard plastic on, on motorcycle and jet ski seats, especially Yamaha. So just a tip there for you. But I mean, you could uh, very easily, very easily take your stock cover off, spray down a big thick coating of this foam. I mean, do it a couple inches thick and then wait two to three hours for it to cure. I would probably go three to four if you do it really, really thick. And sculpt it yourself. And that's going to give you a nice extra sponge. I mean, on top of the stock, on top of the stock foam, that would probably work really well. Now, you're, you might have a little tough time uh, stretching your, your cover back, but the stock Yamaha cover has some more, uh, more flappage. So it's, it's a possibility. Or you can just get an aftermarket cover, get some aftermarket vinyl, do it yourself. Anyway, just a thought. Like I said, if this works, I'm, I'm not going to post this video for, I don't know, a week. Depends on how much I ride. I need to get a lot of seat time on it to see if it works, see if I notice a difference. If it's positive, you're going to see this video. Uh, so, that's it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Just my uh, crazy late night idea. It's like 4 in the morning. See ya. Okay, well, continuing on from... My previous video, which I'm really hoping I saved, I think I put them in a folder in my documents on the computer, but if not, I'll have to re-record some. <laughs> anyway, verdict. Long story short, <laughs> I can't believe this worked. Uh, that little irritation is gone, pure and simple. I <laughs> under five bucks, under. 10 minutes of work, four hours of just waiting around, and I just saved myself shipping and a whole lot of downtime. And it works. After several hours of riding, nothing. That, that's all I can say. Absolutely perfect for me. Now, whether or not you're having a similar issue, or you know, you want to do something more radical, hey. Hope this video helps you out. That's the whole point. I just wanted to uh, try it, hope for the best, and it was successful. So there you go, guys. <laughs> really quick, inexpensive, easy, and possibly creative way to make your seat more comfortable. Thanks for watching. I'm going to get some gas here. Don't forget to subscribe, check out the website, twowheelobsession.com. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.